so the function that calculates the slope as a function of x, we're going to do it this way. So we're going to just generalize that point x here, and we're going to find an arbitrary point close to x. Okay, we're going to call x plus h. Okay, and then we're going to use those two coordinates to generate the slope ratio. So that point here is going to be f of x plus h. This y coordinate here is going to be f of x. So if we want to find the change in y, we're going to do f of x plus h minus f of x divided by f of x or x plus h minus x, which is our run. So our run here is h. Okay, so that's going to simplify to h. And we're going to let those two points come close to each other. So we're going to use a limit. We're going to end up with 0 over 0 slope. And we're going to see how that 0 over 0 resolves itself with a limit. And so the slope function f prime is going to be the limit of this slope ratio when we generalize that coordinate as x. Okay, so then once we calculate this, we are going to be we have a function all that calculates slope or a slope function. And this this process is called the definition of the derivative, or also called Newton quotient, the Newton's quotient. Okay, so now it's very important to understand that we we're using this now, but once we start getting into other differentiation techniques or other ways to find the slope function, we are not going to use this. Okay, so unless it's you're specifically asked to use the definition of derivative, we will use the easier methods. But it is important to understand how to do this and the process of doing this and understanding how this is related to the slope ratio. And generally, we're using the slope ratio to get this slope function called f prime, okay, or the derivative. Okay, so that said, let's use this, this slope ratio or this limit to find the derivative of this function. So we want the change in this y function over the change in x or the slope ratio of that function, which we're going to call the derivative. Okay, so to do this, we are going to take the limit as x goes to, or h goes to 0. Okay, and what does this graph look like? Well, it is a reciprocal function with a vertical asymptote at 3. Okay, so it's going to look like this. And again, we're just going to take some general coordinate x. Okay, it's going to, we're going to say that the y coordinate is 1 over x minus 3. And we're going to take a point x plus h, right about there. Okay, and we're going to say that that y coordinate is going to be 1 over x plus h minus 3. Okay, and that will give us the rise. We have the run with h. We're going to use that ratio and use a limit to figure out what the function that gives us the, the slope value is. So it's going to look like this, 1 over x plus h minus 3 minus 1 over x minus 3. Okay, and that's all over the run. To be able to put this together, we essentially need to, to free up a factor of h in the numerator to cancel out that h in the denominator. So this becomes the limit as h goes to 0. We need to use a common denominator. So I go x minus 3 minus x plus h minus 3. And that's all over the common denominator of x plus h minus 3 times x minus 3. And all divided by h. So I'm going to put the h in the denominator here. And I'm going to start simplifying this and freeing up some factors. So notice that the x is cancel out, minus 3, negative, negative, that's, those are going to cancel out. So I'm left with an h in the numerator. Okay, so normally this is what's going to happen. Lots of stuff is going to cancel out. And ideally, we want to be left with an h in the numerator, which we are. That h is going to resolve itself with its the divide by h here. So I have x plus h minus 3, x minus 3 times h. That factor of h now, so before it can't, can't cancel, now it's a factor, it can cancel. There it is. I've gotten rid of that divide by 0, 
So I can probably resolve, I can probably work out this limit. So limit as h goes to 0, negative 1 over x plus h minus 3. x minus 3, if I let h go to 0, no big deal. That doesn't give me a divide by 0. So I end up with negative 1. This becomes x minus 3 times x minus 3, or x minus 3 all squared. So the slope function, which I'll call y prime here, the function that calculates slope for this graph is going to look like this. And basically, this is just a reciprocal function shifted over. So like with the other reciprocal function that I, that I calculated, I'm going to do it on this side here. So this point here at 2, negative 1, okay, is going to have a 45 degree slope, negative 45 degree slope. So if I were to actually calculate the slope at uh, x equals 2, I'm expecting the slope value to be negative 1. Okay, so when I plug it into this function here, I get negative 1 over 2 minus 3 squared. Yeah, that's going to calculate a slope value of negative 1 over 1 or negative 1 slope. Okay, and that f prime, this equation then, calculates the slope value at that point negative 1 and, sorry, negative 2 or 2. So this would be x equals 2, y equals negative 1. That tangent point there is the slope of negative 1, what we would expect. And in fact, we calculate a slope of negative 1 using that derivative function.